Welcome to DC Daily. I'm Hector Navarro, and thanks to the internet, here's Clark Wolf and Sam Levine. Hi, guys. Hey, guys. Hey. Wait a minute, you guys. My backdrop is still the same, but I'm definitely seeing some very cool new toys and and fun comics behind you, Clark. Hey, what's going on? Well, Hector, as as uh, our audience will know, Hector has been lending me comic books as I am catching up on classic uh, things that maybe I hadn't read yet. And before all of our stay at home uh, happenings happened, he lent me Kingdom Come. So I felt um. like just to honor our lovely Hector Navarro, <laughs> I would display it for all to see. And so he knows that I'm taking real good care. Oh, thank that's you, good. Thank you. I it's got like some a hostage toys. video for a comic book. Yeah. <laughs> it's safe. It's fine. If you ever want to see your comic book again. <laughs> <laughs> I got uh, a Girls' Night Out five-pack. I got Batgirl, Supergirl, Livewire, Harley Quinn, Poison Ivy. Whoa. And I have to show this off. I'm really excited about this. I got some new additions to my Batman versus Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles set. Take a look at this. Look at this. Look at how great the Batgirl is. Don't you love, I love this? Her. This oh, is... wait a minute. That's That looks like Clark when she dressed up for Halloween a few years ago. Uh-huh, let me, exactly. Let me get my costume. <laughs> this is one of my favorite Batgirls. This Batgirl was voiced by uh, uh, Rachel Bloom from Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. She voiced her in Batman vs. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Great movie. One of my favorite uh, Batman movies, one of my favorite Ninja Turtles movies. And today is Thursday. You know what that means. It can only mean one thing. It's Lee Bermejo Day, you guys. Yay! Yay! Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> So let's talk about incredible writer artist Lee Bermejo. What do you guys love about Lee's art style? Well, for me, I mean, I I love seeing these like big beefy versions of all of our favorite characters. I think that that you can definitely see it has made its way into other mediums, especially as we've seen like like Batfleck. I think I was noticing a lot of like big Batfleck and of course uh, Christopher Nolan's franchise as well. I agree. The, the, the big burly, I mean, for the stuff that he does in these comics, you know, he's definitely a force to be reckoned with. So the visual of, you know, how big and burly this guy is. And there's definitely, it reminds me of the, the bat suit, bat suit. Uh, for sure, those images that we saw of the Batman uh, a couple weeks ago, very reminiscent of the Batman Noel suit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree. I, I love his style. I think that it is so uh, beautiful and artistic, and yet it's so like tactical and hard-hitting. And his Joker, and this was something that he'd been working on years before the sort of Batman films, the Christopher Nolan movie, the Heath Ledger iteration of the Joker uh, was released, but his Joker is like terrifying, Ter even just to look at. Well, I am so thrilled to get to talk to Lee and he's joining us all the way from Italy. So manja manja on this one. I'm here with writer and artist Lee Bermejo and he's joining me all the way from Italy. Thank you so much for being here, Lee. How are you doing? Thanks for having me, I'm doing good. How about yourself, doing all right? Doing good, doing good. Staying home, staying distracted. And the good news is, is that I get to read comics, including all of the amazing comics that you've worked on. And the good news is, is you get to work on those comics. Did your sort of schedule change much with everybody sort of going to self-quarantining or, or you, do you normally work from home? Uh, I, I work from home, so not much really changed for me. This is our, this is our sixth week of quarantine here. So we're, we're, we've been doing it for a while now. It's, uh, it sucks to not be able to maybe go out and grab a drink or, you know, but for the most part, um, you know, seeing the situation for what it is, especially here, yeah. um, I'm happy to stay at home. Yeah. Everybody around the world has been rallying behind uh, our Italian citizens. Everybody's been hit really hard. What's everything like right now in this moment in time? So far, you know, doing well, don't really know anybody who's, who's uh, been seriously affected yet. So that's, that's definitely good. But, um, yeah. you know, my, my, my heart really goes out to the, to the medical professionals right now who are absolutely working, you know, hard to save people. Absolutely. Yeah. In, in a bit of a lighter note, I wanted to ask Lee, you know, you're staying home and like you're saying, your work schedule really hasn't changed that much, but your social schedule, you going out, all of those kinds of things, that sort of changed. Have you picked up at home any new hobbies? What are you doing to pass your time when you're not working? 
Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I try to stay as active as, as I can. So um, I actually ordered a, a, rowing, a rowing machine. I see that, yeah. Uh, yeah Meanwhile, I ordered so, more action figures. Like, that's what I'm doing. That's all I did. But you're smart. That's good. Staying active. Okay. Uh, I ordered a lot of wine, too. So, uh, you know, <laughs> but the problem is they're just not delivering. No. Um, uh, yeah, I, I mean, the, the activities are, are essentially, you know, me going back to going back to basics trying to exercise, you know, a lot of push-ups, a lot of pull-ups and rowing and stuff. That's so, Do you find as an artist who has to often reference anatomy that if you're cut, your Batman will look better because you're like, oh, I can just look at my own abs. I can look at myself and see what it looks. No? Is that not the case? I'm, I'm, not the, I'm not the person to look to for superhero, <laughs> for the superhero physique. So, Lee, talking about your Batman, uh, I think that you are very well known for, for the, the style that you bring to your Batman, to your Bruce Wayne. Where did you initially come up with your take on the Dark Knight, that you knew I want to sort of bring this to the comic book world. Where did you come up with that? When I was a kid, uh, I grew up in um, the first six years of my life. I grew up in this really small town in in Ohio, Athens, Ohio. It's uh, pretty much on the Kentucky border. Um, my parents were going to school at the time, and so my babysitter was this VCR machine that, at the time, you could only rent. We didn't we didn't own one, so it was kind of a you know, once every couple of weeks thing. And, and one of the few cassettes available was the 19, what is it? 68 or 66 Batman movie mm -hmm. with Adam West. And so, um, that was kind of my first, I think, access point into the character. And, uh, and I remember even like as a really, really little kid being, um, I mean, I, first of all, I took it totally seriously cause I didn't understand the kind of humor of it, but, uh, I was really interested in, in, weird stuff like the utility belt and, and how, you know, how that worked and, you know, the costume itself. And, and, um, I was really baffled by how they would slide down the poles and magically <laughs> appear in their costumes. And I wanted to kind of find some, uh, explanation for that. Why, you know, <laughs> so, um, I think that's really, uh, you know, where, where it started is just looking at the character and trying to make sense of, really kind of fantastical bizarre comic booky comic booky stuff um the tim burton movie definitely had a big big influence on me at, at that point in time and and um and then probably the other the, the the last little bit of that is um when i was working in wildstorm with jim lee and um carl stianda and a couple of the other artists at the time uh, Jim was starting to work on Hush, and I was doing a book with uh, Brian Azrael called Batman Death Blow, which was the first time I drew Batman. And we would just have these kind of nerdy conversations in the studio about Gotham City and how it would look, and um, you know, like what long years, short years, uh, armor. Yeah. No, you know, we'd have these kind of nerdy conversations, and this was. Um, this was actually even before the Christopher Nolan movies. So I, at that point in time, it was trying to uh, find some kind of personal approach to the to the character and and get into it that way. And yeah, I, I think just a combination of all those different elements kind of meshed into this, you know, goulash that is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love that, that though. I love that that, that your approach is is this incredible like. A sort of realism approach and yet you're still living in this beautiful surreal dreamlike world at times through throughout your work and I especially love that your love of uh, of, of Batman 66 the Adam West stuff I feel like is kind of a little bit in Batman Noel I know that you you, uh, oh, yeah. you kind of you kind of tried a kind of a costume variation on that and even oh, Robin yeah. and everything so that stuff is great and you were mentioning you know uh, Jim Lee and and I, I want to bring up your so one of your most famous collaborators Brian Azzarello You've done so much work with Brian. What is it like collaborating with him? I think it was 17, 18 years we've been, we've been working wow. together at this point, so, so a long time. I think the, the main thing about Brian and why we just will probably always work together in some way or another is we share very similar sensibilities. So uh, Brian, he likes to kind of break stuff apart, but also uh, he and I both aren't, aren't really fans of... Um, the more operatic kind of 
part of comic books, you know, mm -hmm. uh, American comic books, I should say. You know, especially Batman, a character like Batman or, or even Superman for that matter. It's I find that, that I can't relate in any way to it if, if it becomes too kind of, um, I guess, superheroes, you know, superhero is the only word. <laughs> I think Brian's the same way. When Brian has a tendency to focus on things that he can relate to or that, that feel more comfortable mm -hmm. and so i think brian i think that's why brian and i get along is we both have that same approach absolutely absolutely yeah again just to bring that book up again i love your take on etrigan i think that's a perfect <laughs> example of what you're describing right bringing that to a world that we can kind of understand while still you're being the only <laughs> you're the yeah only <laughs> <laughs> i love i love that no, you know yeah. we, no that's great that's man it's great um so speaking of the joker you mentioned this iconic character the joker book that you did is getting a deluxe edition and you gave him a real Cheshire grin. What was it like drawing? What was it like tackling the clown prince of crime? I think that was the most um, probably liberating experience I've had in, in my career because it was really the first time what I could do technically kind of came up to the ideas that I had in my head, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, before that, I, I was still struggling really with the drawing so much so that I couldn't kind of do exactly what I wanted to do with little details and takes on characters. And with the Joker, it was the first time I really felt like we were kind of doing the whole package, you know, yep. and, and, um, and so it was, it was a different time in comics, you know, that, yeah. there, a very <laughs> different time in comics. They would never let us do uh, a lot of the stuff we did in that book now. But um, again, like I just mentioned, it was Brian and I both looking at those characters and, wondering how we could kind of you know see them reflected through our prism i love that and i feel like that book was kind of ahead of its time i mean you've talked about how your take on the joker uh you know whether knowingly or unknowingly sort of predated what eventually the movies heath ledger's version of the joker kind of there were some similarities there and even now with him getting his own movie you know, I, I remember you talked about this before. For a while, the, the Joker book you did was going to be the beginning of almost like a whole line, like this whole mm -hmm. Joker verse, which I think is just so fascinating. And um, and I think that uh, Batman Damned feels like a sort of spiritual successor, like it could kind of live in that world, I think, which is great. But um, anyway, I'm just geeking out. I, I have more questions for you, Lee. Here's the next question I got for you. <laughs> um, you also got to draw for an awesome collection of stories, Batman Black and White. So what was it like for you as an artist taking on a Dark Knight story with only two colors? When you look at those collections, it's just like the best guys in comics did that stuff. Yep. I mean, the Kevin yep. Nolan story, there's just stuff in there that are, for me, I, I put it up there with, you know, my favorite stuff ever done with, with Batman. And so it was just an honor to be a, a part of that and to be, you know, when I got the the collection i couldn't believe it. i couldn't believe yeah. it i mean it was you know it was <laughs> it's like you're looking at a book with all these other people that you really respect and admire and so it was um really surreal you know but the the um i was really happy with the story just because it was uh it, you know it was just another one of those kind of perfect storm things where he asked me to do it and i i just had a i just had a story i knew i knew exactly what i wanted to do and and awesome. um and, you know, he let me get my little, you know, motorcycle thing in there. So, <laughs> <laughs> And you're in it, man. You're one of those all-time greats. You're one of the best working in the industry today. So, yeah, congrats on being oh, up there with, with some of those greats. And before we started rolling, you were kind of showing off. You're working on some stuff right now. Can you kind of give us a little bit of a, of a peek of some stuff that you've got right there in your, in your home yeah. office? Yeah. Yeah, Brian, Brian and I actually, um, they're doing this Joker 80th anniversary book. And, uh, and this story actually, I believe, will also show up in the Joker Deluxe edition as well. But we wanted to do like this, um, it's eight pages. We just wanted to do this kind of uh, a story that's really fits in our world, but is still radically different than anything we've kind of ever done. So I don't know if you can see some of this stuff. It's, oh, it's, wow. You know, the style's a little... That's a little different. It's it's a little bit more kind of playful and um, uh, yeah. I don't, let me see if we can see some of that. Wow, a few pages. But it's um, I really love Dick Sprang. Yeah, I love that <laughs> Batman. And so uh, talking with Brian, 
our stuff tends to be super serious, you know, mm-hmm. and we take it very seriously. And so it, it was fun for us just to do something that's completely on the other end of the spectrum mm-hmm. and kind, but still very much ours. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, that's awesome. It was a lot of fun. Remind me which of your books is it? Is it Batman Noel? Is it Batman damned that there's a sign Sprangs that's on a rooftop? Uh, what? Noel, yeah. Noel, yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. You're, you're a fan. Dick Sprangs. Uh, that's I'm, great. I'm a huge. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I think he's, I think in terms of Batman iconography, I think he's it. I mean, I really, I really think that he's the guy who kind of defined the look of what, like if you show a Dick Sprang mm-hmm. Batman drawing to almost mm-hmm. anybody, they recognize that as yeah. Batman. Yeah. I grew up with uh, Batman, the animated series. And one of my favorite episodes is where they paid homage, right? Legends of the Dark Knight. And they had a Frank Miller inspired segment and they had a Dick Sprang segment. And it was right. the coolest, most fun thing. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. yeah, you can't get two more influential Batman guys. Than Absolutely. Than uh, maybe this is too tough of a question, but give it your best shot. What is your proudest moment as a DC artist? I mean, yeah, you that, talk about that, being a being a part of that black and white, even that collection itself, and, and being that might you know, have been that that was up there. Doing Wednesday yeah. comics was up there because yeah. there, again, it was like the same kind of thing where there was just a lot of um, yeah. I mean, that might that might actually be it because um, I'm not a big convention guy, I, but I I try to go to San Diego Con every year because my my family lives close. So it's a good chance to kind of see my, see them and then do comic book stuff at the same time and and forget when but one year they had a a panel for the Wednesday comics thing that I was a part of and you know I was like sitting on the, on the table with Dave Gibbons and Paul Pope and you know guys that again guys that I really respect and and the little fourteen year old living inside my brain still um, his head just exploded. You know, at that, <laughs> at that point in time, and I just I kind of wanted to take myself into the crowd and just observe. Yeah, you know? but uh, that's great, Lee. Question for you: Do you have a most prized DC possession in your house? Uh, yeah, yeah. You guys, um, you guys just put it out. I've been pushing for this. Not pushing. <laughs> I had nothing to do with it, but I've been <laughs> wanting this, and I, I definitely have the emails to prove, like, when are you guys going to do this collection? But um, DC just put this out, which is uh, uh, Blackhawk by Howard Shaken, which is probably oh. the book, along with The Dark Knight Returns, that um, that made me want to draw comics. It's wow. uh, I, I remember getting this book when I was... I think it was 10 or 11 or something like that. And um, it was just cool because it was different looking than the typical kind of, uh, you know, comics. It, certainly at the time, it wasn't superhero related. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember the color really jumping out to me as, as um, you know, it has like painted color. And at the time it was in a prestige format, by, you know, binding, which was really oh. cool. I was just, and I just loved um, Howard Chaikin's style. I just thought he was, you know, he drew, you know, everything from the storytelling to the, um, to the to the way the characters looked. It was just all very, very cool to me. So, yeah, That's I was awesome. super, super stoked to get that finally after 30 years or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, that is amazing. Uh, I'm excited, too, because you also just gave everybody a great recommendation. I haven't read that book yet. I am so stoked that I get to read that for the first time. That's um, yeah. uh, So I'm really excited about that, man. I, I, I'm looking forward to that. Lee, I want to know this. You have designed and sort of redesigned so many iconic characters in the DC universe. One of my favorites that you took on was Dead Man. I love your Dead Man. So, so great. Also love your Etrigan. <laughs> um, is there a DC character that you haven't yet had a chance to draw that you'd love to take on next? Uh, yeah. Uh, um, I'd love to do Bizarro. I have a, I have a Bizarro story that I, that, you know, I've been kicking around for a little while mm-hmm. and, and I think there, that you could do something you know, a little bit more subtle and and uh, and kind of timely right now with the with the character big time I, I, you know so he's he's definitely one of the big ones that I'd like to eventually tackle given the opportunity please do that someday I would love to read that bizarre that would be amazing <laughs> that'd be great <laughs> okay, thank you and lastly Lee do you have any message for your fans that you would like to share with them right now. Thanks for following the work all these years and specifically right right now, you know, uh, just hope that people stay safe and and um, 
you know, stay indoors. You know, yeah. that's that's really the the only message that I feel like should be sent right now is, is stay safe, stay healthy if you can, and and stay indoors. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Lee, for logging on with me today, man. This has been a thrill. I'm a huge fan, and and thank you for taking the time out of your uh, schedule. We really, really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. You got sure. it. And and now we're gonna go back to the DC Daily Crew. Back to you guys. Oh my gosh, I love that guy. Lee Bermejo, thank you so much. That was so great. Wasn't that great? I'm so glad that Lee is doing okay in Italy, and I cannot wait to see his new art soon. I thought that was fantastic. Yeah, he's amazing. I could listen to him talk about Batman, especially the older Batman, Keaton, Adam West. I could listen to him talk about that all day. Between yeah. his wine collection and his love for Michael <laughs> Keaton, Lee Bermejo is definitely my dude. If you haven't checked out Lee's art. There's so much of it on DC Universe. Both Batman Black and White and Batman Deathblow are on DC Universe. So go read them. And guys, guess what? You can now watch our comic book clubs all in one place. Check out DC Daily's comic book club on DC Universe for some of our favorite comic book chats over the last year. And they're awesome. They're great. Oh, I love that. Club Teddy Ho. <laughs> Teddy Ho. Uh, That's pretty good. That's pretty good, guys. All right, well, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.